Hello everybody! Do you remember one of the previous videos in which I demonstrated the transformation of a 3D object into a cloaked sci-fi character? Back then, we used a standard spatial shader and wrote a few lines of code. This time, we'll do the same thing, but without any code. We'll create our shader visually. Okay, we'll start as usual by creating a material to which we'll later assign the shader. While we could use the existing material from the previous video and just replace the shader in it, it will certainly be better to keep these two approaches separate for easy swapping in the future. So let's right click the shaders folder, create a new resource and this resource will be shader material. We already have it here, double click and let's save it as uh, cloaked material. Material, okay. Right click, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> right click the folder again, create new resource. And this time we will find visual shader. Here it is, double click and this a resource will be saved as cloaked shader. Done. Please note that both these resources have the same extension, TRS, while the original shader had the type G shader. The reason is that a visual shader contains a lot more than the shader logic, so it requires the resource file structure to store the metadata. Before we start, I will prepare the shader material on the character so we would be able to observe the changes in real time. So first, the material is open, let's drag the new shader file into the shader property. And now we will select all the meshes as before, open surface material override and write the cloaked material tiers into that. Good, it's ready. Now uh, I can double click the Cloak shader and the visual editor opens. This is our playground to add visual uh, various types of nodes and connect their sockets to define the shader logic workflow. Let me briefly explain the controls. Add node. This is a simple selector of available nodes to add to the graph. You can invoke it either by clicking this button or right clicking anywhere on the graph. A drop down menu of the function types. By default, we are editing the fragment function, but we can switch to vertex or light. All these functions have their own graphs. Now, the usual uh, zoom in, zoom out, zoom reset buttons, nothing complicated here. You can, of course, use the mouse wheel to control the zoom as well. And by clicking the wheel and dragging, we can move the viewport. This icon snap to grid, grid size. You can see the grid over here. Uh, this one is uh, interesting. It's a grid minimap. Now it's disabled, now it's enabled. We can uh, see it in the bottom right corner and can be useful if your graph becomes too complex. Uh, now this is button arrange notes. It's supposed to do something, but last time I clicked this, button got all crashed, so I prefer avoiding that. Manage varyings. We don't use that in our shader. Varyings are used to send values from one function to another, for instance from vertex to fragment. And since we use only fragment in our code, we don't need, we don't need that. And finally, this one is very important, show generated shader code. When you want to see what kind of code your graph generated, click this button. We will demonstrate it in this video. Okay, I think I can turn this off and we can start. So, as I said, we'll work only with the fragment function. As you can see, the graph was prepared with the output node. It contains built-in variables that we usually set in the shader code programmatically. And we will use these color sockets to connect the outcome of our calculations. The colors indicate the particular socket type. For example, the purple one is a vector, 
the Azure one belongs to a float, etc. Let's start with inputs. As you know, we define several uniform variables in our original shader, and these variables showed as shader parameters in the inspector. To do the same in a visual shader, we need to add the parameter nodes. So I will just copy the name here, and this is supposed to be source color. So let's click back, uh, right click to add a node, and I think that would be color parameter. Yeah, here it is. Let's use it, rename to our parameter. And I think it would be useful if we set a default value here. Uh, it could be, um, okay, let's put it everything to zero. And now we'll make some kind of blue. This is nice. Okay, this is the first parameter. Now, what was their emission amount? Seems to be a float and with a hint range. We will replicate all of this in our visual shader. Right click again, add node and float parameter. Here it is. Okay. Rename, control V, uh, qualifier. Yeah, this would be used only if we need the uniforms as instance uniforms or global uniforms. We don't use it here, so we can leave it as it is and hint. We want a range from, what was that, uh, 0 to 16, okay, 0 to 16, and the default value, I think it was 5, okay, let me zoom out a little bit, and finally, we need a uh, rim sharpness, but it's a float again, and with the same hint range, so we'll save some time if we just duplicate this, Control D, move it down there, uh, rename, control V, and range can stay the same. I think the default value was 3. Very well, let's start implementing the code here. First, we'll start with emission, which seems to be very simple. What we need is the emission color, the RGB uh, portion, and multiplied by the emission amount. So, how would we do here? We start with a vector op because we need to multiply a vector with a float value. Vector op, here it is. And we will use not add but multiply and drag the color from here to here. So it was automatically uh, converted to vector 3 I think and emission amount call it here and since we want to use it as emission we will drag the result to emission which is here yeah it's shining looks like the emission is working okay we're gonna proceed with setting up the alpha value this is a little more complicated so We'll just uh, cut it down to steps. First steps would be to create dot product. So right click and find dot. There we go. And it needs inputs, inputs normal and view. Luckily, it's very easy with visual shaders. Let's right click and find normal, which is a built in a variable normal link it here and the same for view okay so this is the first part now we need to subtract it from one it will be pretty easy let me just make more space for this okay so right click uh, another float up and this time it would be subtraction subtract and the first value is a constant, so we can just put it here as one. And the second value is this dot product, so the result is one uh, minus dot product. Now we need power function and rim sharpness as an exponent. Let's do this uh, here, for example. Uh, no, just pow. 
Okay. And the first argument would be this subtract uh, result. And the second one, as I said, is the RIMP sharpness. Let's connect the parameter. Great. What's there? And now we need to multiply that with the alpha value, alpha uh, component of the emission color. So we need to create the alpha component first. And this is done by decomposing a vector because the uh, emission color is a vector for dimensional. We need only the alpha part. Right click and create vector decompose and connect the alpha value to the input. And we want only not vector 3, vector 4. And the last part, which is called W, but it is equivalent to alpha, we will use in a new operator, which will be a multiplication again. Right click, float up, uh, select multiply, and we will use the result of the power as the first argument and the alpha value as the second one and i think that we can finally connect that to alpha in our final node and here it is yeah i think we are already there we created exactly the same thing as we did in our first video let's start the game and verify yeah i think uh i think it's 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 too dark just too much let me just change that to uh, zero one that should be better maybe even 0 0.05 okay switch back start the game again yeah i would say we reached our destination there is one last thing we want to do and that thing is to set the render mode parameters as you as you might remember we used these ones blend adds uh, callback depth row always so how can we do that in a uh, individual shader it's easy we just double click uh, the shader node it's open in the inspector and we uh, expand modes and here's everything we need. So we change blend to add, depth row should be always, and call back to the default value. So nothing else should be done there. And we finally verify the code uh, that was gener generated. Press this icon and we can see it here. So render modes, a, lot, uh, a bit more than in our code, but it's still it's obviously adding default values anyway, so it should be the same. Spatial is correct, uniforms with hint ranges, source color, everything is right, and the rest is generated. So it's definitely longer than our two lines we did before, but it's working. If we start again, we should see the code figure a little tweaked to with uh, render modes, but definitely correct. Okay. I would say the job is done. Visual shaders may look a bit complicated at first, but once you understand the individual nodes and the relationships between them, it's actually not that difficult. Personally, I prefer traditional programming, but I believe uh, many people enjoy working with graphs. So if this video has sparked your interest even a little, I'm glad. So, until next time, when we'll explore something else in Godot.